Tonight, I will take you to Toscana. In these tough and depressing pandemic times, when we are only allowed to leave our houses if we are out of toilet paper, the best alternative to travel without abandoning your fortress is wine. So sit back, relax and join me on 20 Italian wine regions with Core Breaker. Let's go! Tuscany. That's all I need to say. That's all, folks. Because this is the best known Italian region in the world. And you probably already know everything about it. But just to remind you and myself, I'll go through my drill. So it is the region in central Italy bordering to the north with Liguria and Emilia Romana, Umbria and Marche to the east, Lazio to the south and Tyrrhenian Sea to the west. It is the sixth largest wine region in Italy and only 8% of the region is not decorated with picturesque rolling hills. Closer to the Apennine Mountains, vineyard elevations rise up to 550 meters above sea level. Even though climate is considered to be Mediterranean dry, with hot summer, warm spring and mild and rainy autumn and winter, inland higher altitude creates diurnal temperatures, which helps to balance acidity, sugar and aromas in the grapes. Same is applicable to the soil. Closer to the sea in the Bulgari and the Maremma, you find the gravelly clay and sandy soils. Around the San Gimigiano will be more sandy clay and in the Apennine foothills, grapes are growing on soft and crumbly, more like clay limestone and then sandstone. The lord of the Tuscan grapes is definitely Sangiovese. It occupies two thirds of all Tuscan vineyards and 85% of the region's red grapes. And naturally, it is the main ingredient of the region's most famous wines. One of them is Chianti, the oldest appellation in the region. According to the law, it can be a blend of Sangiovese and other local or international grapes, but the current trend is to make 100% Sangiovese wines from single vineyards. This is another Sangiovese. 100%. 100% Sangiovese. Yeah, 100%. Can you do me a favor? Stop <laughs> dragging it across the stone. Bam. We have Vino Nobile di Montepulciano, which is also occupied by Sangiovese grapes and is similar to Chianti Classico. Next is Brunello di Montalcino, which with Barolo holds the reputation of Italy's finest and most age worthy wines. It is also made of Sangiovese. And if you will get tired of uh, tyranny of Sangiovese, there is a solution and it is called the Super Tuscan. Almost 50 years ago, it was labeled as a table wine and now with names like Sassicaia, Ornelaia, Solaia, it shouts out that Bordeaux grapes can grow pretty well on those rolling hills. Of course, it is such a fine region that it also produces white wines from Trebbiano, Vernaccia and Vermentino grapes. But the most famous white wine is actually dessert wine called Vinsanto, best combined with Almond Biscotti. After this longer than usual intro, let's see what else to do in this marvelous region. First up is Siena. Buonasera e benvenuti a Siena. I love when the whole city holds a UNESCO World Heritage Site title. This means that you can wander through those narrow medieval streets and doesn't matter where you will turn, you will always be surrounded by history. And if you will come at the right time of the year, you will be lucky to witness Paio, the hardest horse race in the world. Next stop is Pisa Tower. Yeah, 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 I know. You will say that it is not as impressive as I might think. But come on, I want to see this anomaly of uh, architecture while it still stands there. And lastly, it is the Officina della Bisteca by Master of the Meat, Dario Cecchini. Yeah! It is one of my favorite episodes on Chef's Table, together with Mark Atras and Ivan Orkin. And yes, I love beef and I could have steak every day for breakfast, lunch and dinner. Uh, probably this diet would last maximum three days. And even though I read that uh, fame and glory changed this place and uh, made it like a factory, I don't care. It's just for one time to feel that crazy atmosphere. So the wine of the region is... Chianti Classico Reserva 2017 by Castello di Volpaia. It is a 
360 hectare winery owned by Mascheroni family and managed by fourth generation Allegra, Olivia and Tito. Winery was always focusing on the vineyards and constant quality of the wine, so pesticides and synthetic chemistry was nowhere around. But just to make it as a bureaucratic fact, in the year 2000 they filled the papers and became officially an organic winery. Apart from a white Chianti portfolio, this winery can also offer a Super Tuscan, Vermentino Whites, Santo, and Volpaia Brut, which is made from Sangiovese grapes. And that would be interesting to try someday. Back to this wine, it is 100% Sangiovese, coming from 10 different vineyards. It is aged for 12 months in large Slovenian oak Casks. This wine has been the first Chianti Classico ever ranked among the top three wines in the world by Wine Spectator magazine. So quite high expectation. But let's taste it. It has a medium intensity cherry color in the nose. Medium plus intensity aromas of ripe cherries, cherry stones, cranberries, juniper berries, violets, cinnamon and new leather. Mouth has medium acidity, medium plus alcohol and mouth coating soft tannins. On the palate, black chocolate with berries. For the conclusions, best candy classic I ever tried. And I tried like three of them, so quite good statistics. Let me know in the comments which is your favorite candy classic. Don't forget to like and follow. Salute!